In this video, I'll talk about some PHP basics. PHP is widely popular. It's an open source scripting language. However, in some cases, there are some case sensitivity issues we should be aware of. Now, keywords that we use in PHP are not case sensitive, but the variable names that we define are case sensitive. PHP code really comes in the form of scripts that run server side. They don't run in a client like JavaScript does. This means then that your web server needs to support PHP, and after it runs server-side, it still ends up being just raw HTML that gets sent back to the client browser. PHP scripts normally have a .php file extension, and they can contain PHP code, of course, cascading style sheet directives for formatting, and of course, HTML. When we write PHP code, the code block begins with less than, question mark, PHP. Then we write our code. Now the PHP code block ends with a question mark greater than sign semicolon. So we would embed that within HTML. That's normally how it's done. And we can have multiple occurrences of our PHP code blocks, as many as we need. We have to remember also to use a semicolon to end each line. And as you write more and more PHP code, you'll find it's helpful to add comments. So you can use either two front slashes, for example, at the beginning of a line to comment it out, maybe for testing or if you're adding descriptive text to your code. In the same way, you might use a hashtag or pound symbol. If you want to use multi-line comments, you can do that with the front slash asterisk and then however many lines you need and then asterisk front slash. Here we have an example of PHP code embedded within an HTML page. Now, this is not a complete example, but at the top, we can see we've got the opening HTML and body tags and things like H2, heading 2, horizontal rule, a P for a paragraph break. That's all standard HTML. Then we can clearly see where a PHP code block begins, and at the very bottom of this example is where it ends, and within it, we have our PHP code. So in this case, we're declaring a variable called date var. It's prefixed with the dollar sign, and we're running new date time to store the current date and time within that variable. Now, notice when you call on functions, even if they don't require arguments, you still use the open and close parentheses. And of course, the end of each line is a semicolon. Then we're using the echo statement to return something back. And in quotes, we've got some HTML, in this case, the underlying tag, and some literal text, followed by a dot. And the dot is the concatenation operator to put things together, such as our literal text, along with our date variable formatted in a particular way. PHP supports a handful of data types like strings, integers. Now, integers are numbers without decimals from negative 2 billion approximately to positive 2 billion, whereas floating points, or doubles as they're called, support decimal points. The object data type is essentially a custom data type that you can create. Arrays allow us to store multiple values within a single variable and then call upon them using array index numbers. The Boolean is a true or false, and resource really is just used to refer to externally stored items like functions, and null means nothing. When we work with variables, they are prefixed with a dollar sign. In this case, we see dollar sign variable name equals value, and the variable name is case sensitive. The value, of course, is what's stored in that memory variable. So we might have dollar sign city equals Halifax. And Halifax is in quotes, and of course we end the line with the semicolon. Then we can echo that back with some literal text using our dot concatenator and then simply refer to the variable. Now we might store a number. So for example, dollar sign hourly underscore wage equals 14.56. So we don't necessarily have to declare the data type, we can just put data in it and it figures it out. We could also use the static prefix before a variable. And what this means is that if that variable is declared within a function, we want that variable to be visible even outside of the function. Then we've got the classic if statement where we can conditionally control our code flow. So for example, here we've got a weekday variable and it is storing the day of the week. It's calling upon the date function and we're giving it a capital D, which means we want the day. And then we're testing it within an if statement. Now the if statement is a function, so it's got an open and close parentheses, and we're testing that dollar sign weekday equals, notice the double equals sign, single equals is for assigning values. We're testing whether or not it equals Friday. 
And if it does, then we want to echo Happy Friday. Notice that we've got the true part of our if code block with an open and close curly brace. Then in this example, we've got an else. Well, what do we do if it's not Friday? Well, we're going to echo back, hang in there. And that's within another code block. So after else, we have the open and closing curly braces and our else code goes within them.